Good morning and welcome to the third installment of Talking to Artists. So uh, I have really been enjoying this and I hope that you do too. And we're going to wait today and we're going to see, um, basically check out Mary Johnson, check out her. Hey Mary, I see you've joined us. I'm going to do just a quick brief interview or overview a little bit um, of some of the other things that are going on as well. So I'm going to definitely talk to Mary. I have my, my uh, timer on this time so I don't go past the 45 minutes because uh, yesterday, Julia, last week, Julia reminded me you can only have 45 minutes and I stopped it at 44 minutes and 56 seconds. So I want to make sure that we can share this. Um, so a couple of quick things going on is Riverdale Art Walk Online is still on. We have over 100 artists at, uh, at that Riverdale Art Walk Online. You can go to riverdaleartwalk.ca or follow at Riverdale Art Walk. A great local show, um, tons of sales, so that's great. So you can kind of see the quality of the work. Anyway, I'm going to now introduce Mary. <coughs> I'm sorry, allergies. Um, so Mary Johnson and I first met because I was actually uh, working with an art consultant through ADC uh, Blink. And uh, this one, we were chatting for like, I don't know, 45 minutes. And she's like, she found out I was going to the Art Expo in New York. Um, and she says, you've got to go and meet Mary Johnson. You will love her. Your work is similar. I represent her as well. And so I did. And that was the beginning of a great friendship. Thank you so much to everyone who's joining us. Wave, wave. And I'm going to bring on Mary now. And. Okay. Waiting the faded breath. Hey, how are you? Good morning. Good. Can you turn your sound up a bit? Okay. I'm on it. Is that better? That is better. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. If you can turn it up more, that would be great. I think that's as high as it'll go. I think maybe the problem is, is I got it sitting. Should it could also just, nope, no, that's not good. <laughs> 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 it could just be me as well, my phone. So uh, I can hold it instead of leaning it on this thing. No, don't worry. Make it easy. Okay. So I was just saying how we met at Art Expo New York. We did. Um, Right. Yeah, and I kind of, you had this amazing, huge booth with, as you can see the work in the background, like her colors and my colors are so simpatico. Um, and of course, you know, she's got a Canadian contact. So even though Mary is, uh, you know, she's in Carmel, Indiana, born, I think, in Duluth, I think you said? I was born in Duluth, but my, my father was a Canadian. I was almost born in Ottawa, but they moved to the, oh. um, right before I was born. So my dad is from Saskatchewan, and... My grandparents lived there when I was a kid, as did my only aunt and uncle are still in Regina. And oh, cool. Then my yeah, and I, I noticed you're saying, oh, sorry, I noticed you're saying a lot of your inspiration is kind of around the Great Lakes. and It is. Um, and I also love the open prairie. Um, we used to travel, you know, west um, across both the U.S. and Canada um, when my grandparents moved to Victoria, British Columbia. So we had some great road trips when I was a kid. And until I was a teenager, and then that sort of stopped. But um, I have been back to Saskatchewan a number of times and, as an adult. Yeah. Well, and make sure you come to Toronto, too, once this whole I, COVID thing I, is over. Toronto. I've been all over Canada, except I have not been in Toronto. Toronto and East. I've been I've been in Montreal, though. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool city. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. <laughs> so um, I am having a bit of a hard time hearing you, so I'm wondering... Um, can everybody else hear Mary okay? I'm having huge problems with my phone, so it might just be me. So if you can just kind of do a little bit of maybe a note. If you're having no problems hearing Mary, that's great. Um, but I am. So anyway, maybe what I'd love to do is uh, if you can talk a little bit about your process, but I would also love you to do a bit of a tour of your studio because it's a studio I'm so very, very jealous of. <laughs> it's oh, so my beautiful. Gosh, I love my studio. I could live here if there was a if there was an apartment attached. Um, I am on the third floor of a building that was built in 2006. It was built to look old though. So um, I have about uh, about 900 square feet that I work in. So you can see the ceiling is open. So there's about 10 foot ceilings. And I have places where I can at least hang on the wall. Um, this whole group back here, all these 12 by 12s have been sold. So which is really exciting. They sold as yeah, you just had a like a really yeah. big corporate sale, I think, right? I did, and they sold as a big group, so they're all going to stay together, which is really exciting. That's so cool. And I just, you know, I move things around. Um, part of my process, as you can see, are these red canvases. I always start with a red 
red in the background for the most part. Every once in a while, I'll do. I'll use a yellow ochre. Um, years ago, when I first started painting in oils, I actually was using orange. Um, I haven't used orange in a long time. Not really sure why. I just, I guess, I love the primary red, and I also like the process of starting from the ground up. Uh, I make my own canvases, um, put together the stretchers, and pull the fabric and then do the do all the gessoing and sometimes i use a sand texture i don't know if you can see it well maybe in this one there's there's a sand texture that i prime um some of the pieces with not all of them i don't think i've ever noticed that before yeah that's what makes them soft it helps to make yeah. them soft and it provides texture i um i do not like to use bristle bristle brushes i am an oil painter but i prefer much prefer the soft brushes so you don't always get a lot of texture with that if that makes any sense um, yeah no i would say because most when i think of your pieces i think of them as being very sort of serene like they're bright colors and they're really strong colors which is amazing like you can see some of the magentas in the background but right. the overall effect is very kind of serene and calming and um yeah you're right i mean it's very the texture is very clean very clean the the boards i use um come from these are custom made, but they, they come with a gesso spray on them. They are flat. Um, again, sometimes I put a sand texture on, sometimes I don't. The small ones, I do not use a sand texture. That's just too much over the top. Yeah. Um, and this is the little town that I'm in. I don't know. Maybe I can step outside for a second. We. <laughs> So yeah, you've got amazing light. Well, I do have amazing light. So my studio windows face north and east, which is outrageous. Can you see down? Oh, look at that. So this is this is Carmel, Indiana, <laughs> Main Street. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, this, yeah, I'm. I'm looking for it. We were we were going to actually do a bit of a road trip down there because you have one of my pieces, and we were going to use that as an excuse to pick it up. But this might be next year. Next year. <laughs> This is, an, this is an amazing um, small city. It's, it's about double this population since we moved here 17 years ago. Um, I lived in New Jersey for 18 years and we lived in California for a few years too before we um, came here to Indiana. My husband's job brought us here. It, hmm. it, this has just been an amazing city. We have lots of public art here, a lot of statues. So, yeah, you have those really cool, I uh, mean, in the middle of the roundabouts, I remember you showing yes, me one. and we have more roundabouts than just about any place in the United States. So from that standpoint, this is a pretty progressive place, even even though it is, um, you know, small. <laughs> it's not a big city. I mean, Indianapolis itself is, uh, we're like the 35th largest metro area in the U.S. or something, but it's not mm. a big place. Anyway. So cool. So um, Mary is probably one of the busiest artists I know. You, you make me feel lazy with the number of shows oh, you do. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't know about so that. So maybe you can talk a little bit about, um, you know, I know you do a lot of art fairs. You've done a lot with uh, Redwood. That's where we've done what well, we did in New York together, um, Las Vegas, San Diego, which, was, of course, was super fun. And I'm so disappointed. I don't think I'm going to be able to make San Diego this year because um, the borders will probably still be closed. Yeah, I don't know um, that they're even going to have it. Um, and they do a lot of outdoor shows as well, right? You want to talk maybe a little bit about kind of how you balance that with your galleries, with everything else? I do. I, I guess I, I recognized early on in my career that in order to make this work financially, that I really needed to have a, eggs in multiple baskets instead of just one. And right now during this pandemic, um, that has it has really helped me because there is sales from different avenues. Um, obviously our outdoor fairs have all canceled for the summer. Um, I did lose the spring one of a kind show, which is where you and I were supposed to be hanging out in Chicago, enjoying life. But I know. I was so sad. I'm going to miss those steak dinners. We'll have to wait next year. <laughs> well, so without the shows, um, I do have some online presence. Um, I am on a site called The Artful Home that's based here out of Medicine, Wisconsin. Um, and so it's an online gallery, yet I get to hang on to my work until the work sells. This is a, it's a site that has grown for, I think they've been in business 25 years, so they've got quite a client base. Um, if there's, I have a few other places where I have an online presence, but the sales that I have online have really come from that particular 
place. So that's selling original art online, right? But you also if license only your images, right? I don't, I don't sell any reproductions online myself. Right. Um, I do have some some reproductions in my studio. I would take them to random art fairs. Not not everyone, but some. Um, I I do have different galleries that I'm represented by. Um, in the United States, I've met most of those people um, at the different shows, um, especially New York, and through ADC, which has just been, um, Lisa's Art Comes Alive show every year is, has just really been an amazing part of my career. So very- Yeah, and you, did you win Best Overall Amazing Historical <laughs> Artist? <laughs> she gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award, which is yeah. was really is stunningly fantastic. Um, yeah. Anyway, that what you were asking me about is publishing. Um, well, and I want to just tell a funny story first, because I was doing um, a commission for this couple up in okay. uh, Alton. So it was a piece like one behind me, 48 by 48 or something. And, you know, they're saying this is the first piece of original art they bought. And they're showing me some of the other things they had. And I'm looking on the wall and going, oh, my God, that looks like a Mary Johnson, uh, right? And how can that be when, you know, like this is northern Canada and you're in the U.S. and stuff. And. She's like, oh, no, I think we bought them at Winners or something. But we just love the colors. And so anyway, I guess I reached out to you. And indeed, it was a Mary Johnson. Yeah, it was a Mary Johnston uh, reproduction, though, right? Yeah. And so how do you get, how do you work through that? That's through a company well, that... It's... So they have... It's called Studio EL. Um, they have about 60, I think, 65 images of mine that they publish. And that publishing takes the form of many different things. They sell directly to what they call the trade, which would be to interior designers and um, our consultants that are doing corporate projects and, and such. And then they also have, they, they license those images out to different websites. Like I think if you go on art.com, you can buy a Mary Johnston um, reproduction. So and how do you choose what pieces are going to be um, reproduction pieces versus originals? And how do you kind of stop the cannibalization of sales there? I'm not really competing against myself with that, except that fact that, well, for instance, I just had an art consultant talking to me about he, he didn't have a budget for originals. So, you know, they're buying through Studio L and which is great. It's for a, a hospital in Florida. Um, and of course I did tell him that, you know, I get, uh, my, I think my base is, I think I get 10% of each of the sales. It depends on what the substrate is that's being printed on. Um, but it's still, it's still part of my income. Does that make sense? Like it, it mm -hmm. so like I said, my income is coming from multiple different sources. If, if my income was just coming from outdoor fairs this summer, I would be, in a world of hurt and thankfully like all of us, yeah. <laughs> thankfully that's not the case um so i'm you know really really grateful for that piece of the business wasn't really sure about it when i first dived into it I, i've had so many um, different companies ask me um to to be part of their to be part of their artists because my imagery works well for healthcare and it works well for corporate it's a great mm -hmm. place to rest your eyes, I guess, is, or, you know, the peaceful nature thereof, or however they put it. And especially the colorful work, you know, if they're looking for non, um, more sedate, more monochromatic, they're not looking at me as an artist. So that, and that's, yeah, well, I mean, that's and it's interesting because we often end up right. being in the same sort of programs or being like with the healthcare industry, certainly right. in the U.S. Right? They, well, seem, not, they seem to have money for art, so which is great. Not to mention that you and I are both at Wycliffe and, in Great Britain, so and they yes, exactly. there. <laughs> well, and that that was another thing too. I think that was kind of, um, you know, I think that it's interesting too that one of the things I found with doing these art fairs in the U.S. is that you know the art world becomes pretty small, you know, um, and it's kind of neat how you can kind of expand your network of people, and then you know my whole rising tide floats all boats. Um, you know, there's this give and get of of conversation. So I first met Ben at Wycliffe um, at Art Expo New York. Right. Um, a gallery just outside of London, which has been amazing, and they love the work and stuff. And then, um, you know, I recommended Mary to him because I love your work, and it's got that same. We I think we find that we have similar clients, right? People will buy your work, they'll buy my work. Like I see that often, even within this client that had 
reproductions of yours, there's a there's a simpatico of colors and stuff that works. So exactly. and I think that's kind of works really well. And I think I do think that's something that more artists should really try to consciously do. Like how do you help other artists? And then that kind of comes back and helps you too, Correct. right? Um, I don't mind helping other artists at all, especially, yeah. you know, to, to get a leg up somewhere or somehow, mm -hmm. you know. Well, like we had when we were, you were going to meet with um, Valerie uh, for Gallery, Gallery oh, 5, right? It, and, yeah, and so we had a, an amazing dinner and stuff, and then she had see, a There's nice another pizza. gallery we're both in, so there we go. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> <laughs> which is cool. So... Um, obviously, you're not doing your outdoor shows. We're not really doing any art fairs, um, but I know you're super busy. I'm you know, with a lot of, uh, so I guess that's a lot of it's commission work. Uh, do you want to kind of maybe talk about how you get that commission work and how you manage it? And... Gosh, you know, I, I think the commission work, and I just got, I, I just got notifications, um, a notification yesterday to do a group of squares. Of course, she wanted to buy some squares right off the wall, and I was like, can you imagine we both... Um, I don't have any left, which was <laughs> strange. It was, it was almost real, but um, that's okay. She said, she said she's never met me before, which is really interesting, but she said she peruses around different gallery websites and different artist websites, and she just found my pieces and liked them. So we've had a couple of conversations and, but for her, she just, because she just wants a group of squares um, and she knew, knew what she wanted, she had saved some images and that's fine. Other ones, especially if it's um, something for someone's home and I'm not there, they can send me a photo of their space and give me an idea of the size and I can drop images in to that space mm -hmm. and see what works. It's a great way to be able to, to do commission work from afar. Um, I'm not that good at Photoshop. I'm only good on Photoshop what I need to be good at. Fair enough. <laughs> and totally. <laughs> Well, I, it's funny because I just there's only yeah, so I just did a blog post um, about uh, you know commissions in the time of coronavirus because you know right. often my commissions come from Toronto so you go and you meet with them and you see their house and you have some wine and you bond and which is oh, really no, no, fun not, right not you not yeah, right but <laughs> not no right no not unfortunately not but yeah so it just sort of changes the way you do it but in some ways that's good because I think for um, artists but also for clients they become more comfortable doing these things online and with um, right. calls and. I don't know. I thought maybe there'd be more online sales this year. Um, not necessarily. It's been kind of the same or I guess, I mean, the healthcare work, this is what, this is fantastic. I just, um, you know, I've always wondering what's going to happen forward, what's going forward. I mean, I'm hoping eventually we all can go back to some sort of normal and do shows yeah. again. We'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I definitely miss the people, you know, like you miss the people and the energy of the outdoor shows. But um, I, I do, do think that this, um, I miss yeah, but I do think this time has also forced artists to recognize, like you were saying earlier, you just can't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, and, you know, both you and I have really good and deep relationships with our galleries. We work really well with galleries, absolutely respect the relationship they have. Um, but they're also, you know, struggling right now, too. And so, you kind of have to make a little bit of revenue from a whole bunch of different um, right, kind of different opportunities and different avenues. And I'll do whatever, you know, whatever it takes to help the gallery get their sales too, you know, as far as, you know, helping to make that sale in any way that I can. Let's put it that way. Yeah, because it's a bit weird now because I find, because often, I don't know about you, but like I hold the art, but the gallery sells it, which means that, you know, we're in a situation where we're sending it, shipping it directly from us to the client, right? Right. Um, and I think in that case, you always have to remember, it's not really my client, it's the gallery's client, right? So it's kind of all those relationships still have to go through the gallery. And I think that, uh, actually, I think I'd like to have a gallery um, owner on talking to artists, because I do think it's something that artists could better understand what the gallery's role is and what their relationships are versus what the artist's kind of obligations and responsibilities are. And I think both you and I have done very well by having good gallery relationships, art fair relationships, um, you know, I haven't really done the online or prints or licensing because I just haven't quite wrapped my head around it yet, but something to think about. Something to think about, even though if you don't need to do it and you're... Well, you're no, but I am, I am also getting calls for larger pieces, right? Like, you know, people, like I reached out to somebody from a healthcare consult, art consultant reached out for a healthcare project and they wanted, um, I think, 10 large pieces and 10 large originals are just... 
you know, really pretty cost prohibitive. So 10 reproductions would still be kind of nice income. And it's not really that it's cannibalizing because you probably would, I mean, I didn't get the job anyway because I don't do reproductions, right? <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what happened with, with that particular, how I even got into it. I did start having some of my work scanned um, almost right away when I started doing shows back in 2006. I started having work scanned and I didn't realize quite how valuable those scans were for me. Mm -hmm. They're not inexpensive. You need to do them right. You need to have them done on a flatbed scanner or have the pieces photographed by somebody that has camera capability beyond your imagination. And, and that way you've got these huge, I mean, I had just absolutely huge files and some of my works can be printed or reproduced absolutely enormous especially the pieces that you know 48 by 72 to start with they can go three times as big and not lose too much so it's oh, that's pretty cool it is pretty amazing and you, pretty how amazing. do you determine what you're going to scan because i'm assuming you don't scan everything i don't know i these days i'm hardly scanning anything it's just because i have such a big inventory of scans at this point um right i there, i have a contact at studio el and he and I will look at different things and say, you know, do you want this? Um, actually, it's this time of the year that he'll take it. He'll take a look. So, you know, do you want anything else for your inventory? What what is it you're looking for kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because my, um, you know, my sister actually works with uh, PI. So PI Fine Arts in Toronto, um, they represent me and they do the fine arts pieces. And then PI originally started off as Posters International. So their background is in. Um, reproduction and scanning and stuff like that and it was actually kind of funny because um, we um, went in to talk to them to kind of understand a bit more about the process because Helen was kind of going I was looking through your catalog and I didn't see my pieces so I was just wondering what's going on and they looked on and said oh no absolutely they're there and it was interesting that they actually in Helen's case they were locked, they um, they modified the paintings a little bit too to they have to, to they have fit more the decor and the decorating trends and so that's kind of interesting as well. And I think that originally Helen was a little bit kind of put out. She's like, well, you, you screwed around with my creative. But on the other hand, it creates even more of a distance between the original art you're getting and the decor piece that people are buying as a yes. printable piece. Do they do that for yours as well? They have. I actually had to agree to that in the contract that, that yeah. they could do to my work. And I think she probably did. I think she just didn't recognize, didn't realize what that actually was going to mean. Like I guess in one, they kind of moved the stones over to the other side and they kind of shifted the color balance a little bit, which it was a cool image, just well, wasn't recognizable. I know this sounds weird, but my signature, when they go out, a lot of them don't have the signature on them. It depends on what the client asked for. So from that standpoint, yeah. it, it, somebody could take a picture of and go, who is this? And they may never know who the artist is. Well, like Others the ones that um, in my friend's house, yeah. Yeah, no signature. Hmm. Well, that's cool. And so I understand you just got back from your cabin in Wisconsin, which must be I great did. inspiration for you. I, having to drive 10 and a half hours to be there for five days was not, was not, <laughs> I wish I could not inspiring. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I, I brought all my paints up there and I just never, I, I finally cracked something the last day, but because we had work to do, it's called also called the work camp because when you go up there for the first time, in the summer, there's things that you have to take care of. And not to mention yeah. that, you know, you, you have to see a few friends and such, even though, you know, you're keeping your distance a little bit from them. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I'm going to I'm going to go back pretty soon and I'll stay there for a number of weeks. And I, I do like to work up there. I don't necessarily like to paint outside. I don't like all the crap that falls from the trees on my paintings because, yeah. cause you know, I like them nice and smooth, but it is a very inspiring place to work. Mm -hmm. I'll be here in my studio working away. Yeah. I actually like to work some at home too. I have a, I have a lovely um, uh, sunroom sort of thing off my kitchen that I'll sit and work at. Cause we have a, we have a pond behind the house that we share with, you know, 19 other people, but it's still four acres of water and lots of birds. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like, I, it's nice, I find, especially in this time of uh, coronavirus, again, it's just like, it's nice to be able to have other places you can go. Even just that change of scenery is just so right. refreshing, right? Right. Well, with my husband working at home, my studio is very refreshing. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I, get that. 
you know, trying to run a construction project from afar, and it's just, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, Even just a different energy, different energy with more people in your, in, in your home studio versus it when you go out to an art correct. studio and talk to, them, talk to artists, and you can talk about the glories of deep magenta for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it's an engaging uh, conversation, whereas your family's well, I, like, oh, God, I come, tell me now. I come here, and I just have, I have Magdalena downstairs on the first floor. She's around. We usually sit and chat for a bit, but otherwise, I don't see anybody when else down here at all yeah so there's the two of us <laughs> yeah well I, I sort of obviously have art alchemy and we go there uh, occasionally and we have sort of um, right. a whatsapp to make sure we don't have too many people there just because of the uh but i find that most of the time we're there by ourselves anyway and when someone else is there it's kind of a nice it's a nice surprise it's a nice kind of connection which is good right right, Keeps right. It fresh. exactly yeah. um Okay, I, I guess I just wanted to, is there any, were there any questions anybody had to ask Mary? Anything like that, then sort of put it in the comments. But uh, it's been really great talking to you and I can really hardly wait till we can do. Uh, I know. Oh, Vicky says, thanks ladies, very much, be well. Thank you, Vicky, we will be well. <laughs> Vicky's got great art too and hopefully she will be a, a guest one day. She's got very bright, colorful colors, which is super fun. Oh, I'm just looking um, forward to seeing everybody again one of these days too. Oh. Yeah, me too. I have to say, I'm so disappointed about San Diego. It was just so lovely last year. And, you know, we, you kind of showed us the town, which was nice with um, uh, Marianne and, and Horning as well. But I yeah, do. it was a good, oh, people want to see more of your studio. She wants to see more of the studio, see? Yeah. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so what would be, if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only take three colors with you, what would they be? Oh, just stop. <laughs> 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 I, you know, I mostly work in a cool palette, I would say, even though I do use, uh, I use cadmium red. Um, I do use a little cadmium orange though, but I don't know. Yeah. I, there's so many colors of blue that I would have to take with me. Turquoise would be one. I'd yeah, have to totally. have turquoise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's well, funny. I've been, uh, I don't use cadmium red either. And I've been sort of trying to force myself to use color palettes I don't usually use. Um, and part of this uh, COVID collaboration I've been doing with Lisa Hickey is a bit like that. It's a bit about going outside your comfort zone and doing things you don't usually do. And uh, I don't know, I really struggle with reds. I like red, but I seem to struggle with actually working with it. Well, I prefer um, the, the red that I prefer really is the quinacrinone. Yeah. This, although this is a, there's some napa, maybe a little bit of orange in there. Right. But the quinacrinone, the um, quinacrinone magenta, red, and violet are three that I love, love, love to use. Hmm. I don't think I've used the, the violet. I'll have to try that. The quinacrinone violet is fantastic. And I do have, like your sister, I do have my handful of beautiful mm. Charbon paint from France. Yes. I'm loving those that we got in Paris. I, know, I, actually, I need to reach out to you and find out where you get them because uh, I'm running out. They're like little pieces of gold, so I'm really sensitive about how much um, I use. I, I get them at Jerry's Art, uh, Jerry's Art of Ram of Florida. Um, this was the first one I started using, this green. And uh, I had a, I used to teach, and I had a student that had a house in Florida that brought me that brought me one of these. And I started using it. But I was only using this one and a few other a few other of the colors, and then about a year ago I started. I I I don't know. You hate to have a palette that's too full of different. That's too full of different colors, you know, because then there's it could end up being a mess. Does that make I know, sense? But it's kind of fun too, though. I mean, I, it's it fun to introduce <laughs> new colors. Oh, somebody oh, else. Uh, with the question, what brand is that? This is Charvin. Can you see that? Oh, I think I might have lost this, you. Yep. Oh, you okay. lost so me. we lost you a little bit. So if you can actually just reiterate the brand and the name of that paint. Because I can't remember. It begins with a C. Can you see me now? Are you back? Okay. This is no. called Charvin. Okay. All right. You got it? And it's yes, we got it. Charvin. Yeah. Charvin, it's from Those are the France. ones that um, some of us watching my earlier post, I had posted uh, on Instagram this amazing shop yeah. here in Paris. Just uh, that well, was a Charvin shop. Oh, this, love this that color. New favorites, okay? So this, yes. this and the favorites would have to go to the island with me. 
but this is called um, Provence Blue, and it is an extra fine oil. These are more, way more expensive than the other one I held up. But most of, um, mostly what I, I use a lot of gambling, love gambling. And I also really like some Windsor Newton colors. So you're, there's you're a painting whole, oils, right? I paint in oils, right. But there's certain colors in Windsor Newton that you just can't, I have not been able to find another. Um, the Naples, yeah. well, the, the Naples um, deep light, regular, I don't know. I, I mean, those are part of almost every piece I, I work on, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, I find the same thing because I, um, you know, it's nice to be able, I like to be able to, have, to take the paint right out of the tube versus mixing it. I do mix occasionally, but um, I don't know. I just kind of like that immediacy, I think, of, uh, and, the, and the consistency when you do that. But I definitely find there's different colors in different brands that I like. And I use both. I, I'm i not a huge paint mixer. I used to do some of that, but um, mostly it's, I was a trained watercolorist. And I think, and I used to sell watercolors about 100 years ago, it feels like. And I think some of my technique was really watercolor, watercolor technique, but I've made it work with using oils instead. So, um, yeah, I find for me, I, um, I absolutely, I mean, trained artists, so of course, you know how to mix colors, but when I'm in the middle of the zone, I don't want to have to stop and mix color. And that kind of takes me out of that headspace, right? It's nice to just be able to kind of plop more color on your canvas or on your palette and you can just keep working. Right. I mix a lot of colors with my brushes. That's how it, yeah. Like on the lovely. canvas. Yes. Yes. Or you take like if you look at this piece up here, you see that the cerulean. I can see the violet more, more cerulean. Yeah. Um, yellow, a oh, little bit of green, and red, and some radiant. You you know, just keep blending them. But it, everything I do has at least two cups of oil. You have to go back and and redo be, to go over to give it the uh, that depth, richness that comes with the oils you know one coat yeah. so the question is what are the colors you lay out every time lay out every time oh she says what do i lay out every time well every single time i lay out cerulean for sure and i love to use quick dry white and what else? Oh, I don't know. It, it just depends on what I'm working on. Yeah. There's always cerulean white on the palette, and there's always purple. <laughs> Mostly, I, I use a little bit of that, um, that this. Jaxazine, however you pronounce it. I'm horrible. <laughs> that would get on the palette. And... Perhaps um, this is one of my absolute favorites is this uh, Portland Cool Gray. Ooh. I know, right? That looks cool. I'm not a huge fan of black. And I don't, I don't even like using like the Mars black. It's, or the, even the ivory. It's, it's just so, I don't know, depressing. It's harsh. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't use black either. So, well, and I was recently, I was asked to do um, one in black and silver and taupe. And I'm like, oh, it's just. It was a real challenge. It, had, it took me a while to wrap my head around it because I don't usually use those colors, but I was really um, happy with it at the end. But it was definitely, I had to think about it differently. Well, you saw that piece that I had to do with all that, all that black on it. And yeah, it was cool. It was cool, but it had a very, little- Very similar color palette, actually, yeah. It had, it had a little of that Portland gray on it and yeah. some cerulean and some ochre. I don't know. You know, I just love color and I just love putting together different different things to see what happens, see what you get kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. And as you can also see, my work is very horizontal, uh, very landscapish. Even, I, I mean, I try to do some abstracts the best I can, but they all still come out looking a little bit landscapey, no matter what happens. Um, well, I, I think I always refer to mine as sort of abstracted landscapes. Like, um, you know, it's kind of, it's, still abstract but it still has that landscape feeling right right someone's asking me what do i use to dilute your oil paint um <clears throat> i don't really dilute but liquid liquid okay. 
Everything's better with liquid. <laughs> have to remember and do you that. put a glaze or coating or varnish on top of the pieces <laughs> after you're finished? Um, I do. I do use the Gamblin. Um, oh, where is it? I don't know if I have it here. They they do make a varnish. Um, I have some pieces. I use this, the camera to spray them at the end. Oh. Yeah, it gives it just a little bit of a sheen. At least it's a protectant, depending on where it's going. And you, that can be reworked. Um, some things I just run a light coat of, very light coat of liquid on top of them. Um, again, to give it a sheen. Yeah. Some pieces I don't varnish at all. It just depends. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different because, energy, right? Well, with oils, it's a fat over lean anyway. So the last coat has some liquid in it. And it's hard. You, you can't really protect any. I mean, if someone walked up to it with a permanent marker and ran it over it's not going to protect it from that nothing is yeah uh but no one it, hopes that people don't do shit like that <laughs> you know <laughs> you would hope but you never know <laughs> you yeah. Know yeah so anyway okay well i think we're getting towards the end of our time because i want to make sure we can kind of record this okay. and uh so people can come and check out all your cool stuff later yeah. um <laughs> i know i hope we can save this that's what i was that's yeah, I hope so too. So I'll try and figure out how to do that on my end. I'm still kind of okay. learning this as well. Um, but it'll definitely be on my Instagram, on my IGTV. Um, okay. And I think that you can actually go through and save it definitely on your story, Mary. And I'm going to try and save it on Facebook, which means that you should be able to put okay. on your Facebook. So it's Mary Johnston Art, J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N Art. If you're looking at following Mary, which you should, because if you like my stuff, you'll love her stuff too. And... Um, I don't yeah, look forward to do though. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us, Mary. I really appreciate it. It's, it's been really fun. See, good to see you this morning. <laughs> well, you look fabulous. I oh, can see you put your earrings it. on, nice oh, necklace. And got, wait, and I've got my new bobble on that I bought from um, another artist. I actually ordered it on Etsy. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. I just, I wash my hair. That's as far as I got today. I just, I just got this in the mail yesterday, so I had to wear it today. It's from um, Thunder Sky um, Jewelry in Wisconsin. He's a great, oh, that's so cool. yeah, he's a great metalsmith there. So I usually every summer I buy myself a bobble. Some, some I know I saw something on uh, the One of a Kind Toronto, this jewelry, and it was just like it was a really cool I, band. I'm like, oh, do I really need another room? I really don't. But you do every. It's a weakness. I, I, I buy myself something every summer, and because there's yeah. no show, I had to buy it on Etsy. That was the first time I well, think I bought Etsy. Yeah, and I think it's important for artists to support artists too, right? True. And Very true. So it's not only just those other people that don't create art that are buying art, but artists can also buy art and help support the neighborhood. Exactly. Well, thank you for, for having me this morning, and it's good to see you. And hopefully we'll good see you too. Soon. Have a great day. You and, too. Uh, yeah, we'll Thanks. talk to you later. Thanks okay. again. All right, bye. Um, okay, so thank you so much for uh, joining us. I will try and post that. Um, so hashtag or at Mary Johnston Art if you're looking to follow her. Um, at Riverdale Art Walk if you're looking for the Riverdale Art Walk. Um, and um, the other thing, the other thing that was mentioned a couple times is both Mary and I are part of uh, ADC, which produces this book called Blink. And um, Blink actually goes out to I don't know how many, but a ton of um, art buyers and stuff across the U.S. And so with that, you have presence. And those art buyers can reach out to you directly. Um, and you can do a commission or you can do that through Blink. So it's a really good, um, it's a really good initiative. I know I've had a couple of people who have um, asked me about Blink. Um, and I think it's really, uh, it's really a worthwhile marketing, um, marketing expense that you just need to kind of make sure that you actually use and leverage. And I'm not always so great at that, but that's really where the success is. So thank you so much for joining me. Next week, same back channel, same back time. We've got, um, who do we have? Oh, Carolyn Lady of the Arm. So she's actually going to talk a little bit about balancing. She's still working uh, full time. She's an artist as well. And she's balancing um, her kind of creative pivot when um, COVID happened and what she did differently. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Really appreciate it and have a fabulous day. Okay, bye.